Hi folks, Sky from Midwinter Minis here, and welcome to episode 2 of my Blackstone Fortress speed painting series. In this video we're going to be painting the four Ur Ghoul models. First off we're going to tackle a little optional first step. See these divots in the centre of the bases? I don't really like them, and I want to cover them up. As we've already assembled our models, uh, we don't need the assembly manual anymore. It's made of nice gloss coated thin paper, which will do a great job of covering up the imperfections on the bases. So snip out a section of the assembly guide, and from that section, cut off the corners to create four small triangles. I'm choosing triangles rather than strips because the tiles of Blackstone Fortress feature triangular patterns, so we can maybe integrate the angles of the paper later on when we paint the bases. Test fit the paper triangles on the bases to make sure they're not too big. If they overhang the edges, cut them down a little more. Once you're happy with the fit, apply super glue to the base in the area where the paper was covering, and use a hobby knife to guide the paper into place. Make sure the edges are flat and let it dry for a few minutes. This is the point I'll start all future videos in this series, so we don't keep covering the same steps. Now we can start painting. First, we'll want to use our grey primer to give the models a good all over coat. Make sure to shake the spray can well before priming. Once the grey primer is dry, we're going to add another quick coat of spray primer, but this time we're using white. Spray from the top down this time, and not from the sides. This will create what's called a zenithal highlight, creating natural shadows on the model. Once the white primer is dry, we're going to create a turquoise glaze. To do this, add one drop of blue paint to your palette, and now add one drop of green paint. Now add six drops of water and mix it all up. This will create a semi-transparent glaze that will tint the model, but still let the zenithal highlight show through. Apply this glaze all over the models using your standard brush. And once it's dry, it will look like this. As you can see, everything has a nice turquoise hue, but there's still definition and detail showing through. Now we're going to use our white paint and a technique called dry brushing to accentuate raised details and make the models more pale. Put a drop of white paint on an absorbent surface like a paper towel, card or MDF, and use your dedicated dry brush to work the paint into the bristles. Keep working the brush until barely any white comes off. Now, gently sweep your brush back and forth across the model. Try to catch all raised edges and prominent muscles. And don't apply too much pressure and avoid the darker areas like the armpits and backs of the knees and the groin. And here's how the models look after the all over dry brush of white. Now we're going to add a purple tint to the hands of the Urkuls. Just like we did with the turquoise glaze, mix one drop of paint with enough water to make it transparent on the palette. Paint this glaze over the hands of each model using a standard brush, and a little bit on the forearms. Now use your fingers to wipe away the paint from the raised parts of the arms, and it'll make the purple tint fade nicely. And while we're waiting for this to dry, let's quickly create another glaze for the Urgul's face holes. Mix up another glaze using red paint and water, just as we did with the turquoise and purple. Using your standard brush, paint this red glaze into the mouth and nostrils, and let it spill a little around the front of the face. Again, use your finger to wipe away any areas you don't want, and the fade will look nice and natural. As we're speed painting, let's get these bases painted black while we're waiting for these glazes to dry. Attach your models to something so you don't have to hold them by the actual model itself. I'm using blue tack on top of one of the spray primer lids. Add some black paint onto your palette, thin with a tiny bit of water, and give the bases and rims their first coat of black paint. Now 
This should be dry in about 10 minutes or so, and once it's dry, add the second thin coat of black paint. Now at this point, you could definitely call this speed paint done. The models look great, nice and vivid, and will look awesome when playing the game. And if you want to spend another couple of minutes, and if you feel up to doing some slightly more delicate brushwork, we can do a couple more steps to really make the models stand out. Using your brown wash and your fine detail brush, you can make small dots using the tip of the brush across the Urgul's shoulders. Now as this is a wash, not a paint, try not to connect the dots as they'll just turn into a big brown blob. And using exactly the same brown wash and detail brush, we can also line a couple of the key muscles on the models, particularly on its back, chest, abdomen, and arms. Just take your time and run the brush gently into the recesses of the muscles. It shouldn't take too long, and you can easily use your finger to wipe away any brown wash you get on the raised areas. And with that, the Urgul models are done. All we need to do now is take care of the bases, but we'll cover that in a separate video. With only minutes spent on each model, you now have four great looking miniatures ready to game, much better than bare plastic. In the next episode, I'll show you how to speed paint the spooky spindle drones. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and leave me a comment, I love reading them. And also, if you know anyone who's recently bought Blackstone Fortress or been given it as a gift, share this video series with them, I'm sure they'll really appreciate it. Bye for now.